Hey folks, welcome back to The Pulse. It's two o'clock Central Texas time and I am here to pump you up. Folks, I um, have joy deep in my heart and it, well, it is for you. It is for you. I want to share with you some encouragement in a time of great unrest. And it's Freedom Friday, folks. It is Freedom Friday, TGIF. And it, what does that mean? Right? What does it mean? What does it mean to be thankful for what you have? You know, perspective is everything. There's a thing called an expectation reality gap. What is the gap between your expectation and reality? You know, so many times in relationships, we have an expectation of what someone else is going to do, an expectation of what somebody else is going to be. And you know what? Then there's reality of it. And a lot of times we have built these ideas in our mind. And of course, you know, there's always this somewhat of this disappointment between the expectation and the reality. And then at other times, we're just surprised. Miracles do happen. But folks, this is something that perspective is so important to have. Because without hope, what do people do? Without hope, people strap bombs to themselves and, and they detonate. And there's so many people without hope in this world. And we in crypto, we got some hope. We got some hope because we've seen some unusual things. We've seen the miraculous. I don't know if you know about this, but there's a thing called the Passover meal. And the Passover meal during Passover is where the Jews remember that they were brought out of Egypt. Why do they? Why do you want to be reminded of this stuff? Because it's a miracle. Because what are the implications of it? If there is a God of all creation that cares about you and delivers you, it's not that it happened. It's that it happens over and over and over again. You're being called out of your own place of bondage. That's the big story here. You may be in a really tough situation. You may, your health may be failing. You may have a, a challenge with a relationship. You may be in addiction. You may be in so many different situations. And I would say this, do not give up. We learn more through the pain than we do from the joy. But you know what? Community is what it's all about, folks. Why do we come together? Why do we do this? Because you guys are amazing, right? It divides our pain and it multiplies our joy. But guess what today is? It's Freedom Friday. I'm going to set the captives free. How do we set the captives free? By rebooting the system. Sometimes the computer's got to be rebooted. I remember when I had this, the old 486 for all you youngsters out there, you don't even know what a 486 is. I had the 486 laptop, man. I had to run my defrag. I had to defragment it. And that reordered all the memory, right? You have to do that on occasion. You have to clean up. You have to reboot the system. But it's like any system, right? Like organic systems. You got to trim back things that get out of control and gangly, right? It's the same thing. These systems need to be rebooted at times because we got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to the fundamentals. We got to get back to the values, the things, the purposes, because we constantly do it. You know, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. What does that mean? We see it so often. People get an idea of what they expect you to be or to do. And you know what? People keep on hitting on things. You know, things are tools, right? The blockchain's a tool. The internet's a tool. Money is a tool. I mean, you can hammer in a nail with your shoe. You can do it. I've tried it. Believe me. I haven't had a hammer around. I'm like, man, maybe my shoe will work. It certainly wasn't meant for that. But that's the thing. What is a tool meant for? And how are you using it? Are you using it skillfully? And that's what we're doing here in crypto, right? That's what we're doing in crypto land. We're preparing for the next run. And what are we doing? We're trying to understand what does it mean to have abundance? We're rebooting the system, folks. We're a part of the solution. You know, and all we are is people, right? Who are the authoritarians? Who are the globalists? They're people. Yeah, they're people. A lot of those people have families and all that stuff. So there's a lot more of us than there are of them. And so we've got to make our, our voices heard. You know, I look in the past history. What has happened? What has caused unrest? What has caused revolution? What has caused solutions? Pain. People are more likely to suffer than change. And so suffer they will. 
And at some point, they'll change. And we're suffering right now. People are. That's what's happening. But let's see who is joyful and in the chat who needs some encouragement from Crypto Heartbeat. Taryn, listening on the road. Have a blessed day all, and don't mess with Texas. Well, I'll tell you what. If you looked at the chart, you're not going to mess with Texas today. Whew. Been pretty impressive here recently. All the all the dumpers are out, and it is crawling its way out, my friends. Godfather J6, what's going on? Good to see you facing reality with the dab, the elbow cough. If we had rags here, he would do the boom for you. David Lee, he's the guy who traveled all the way from southwestern Indiana to Michigan, seven and a half hours to be at my dad's funeral. He's the guy who will hug you, and he's going to hug you if you come to a meetup. You're going to get a David Lee hug, guaranteed. Good to see you, buddy. John Balazian. Oh, wow. The retiree himself. He's like, howdy, y'all. TGIF doesn't mean as much when you're retired, but happy to be able to catch Crypto Heartbeat. Thanks so much, John. Dude, you're doing it. You're living it. You know, John is a regional representative and volunteer for the Texas Nationalist Movement and an all-around great guy. And he's leading a group of people. He is he is practicing what he preaches. He believes this stuff. He knows where we're going, and he knows we got to stand up. And he encourages people to do that in his area. And I'm really glad that we get to journey together, John, because this is how we do it, right? Right? Even the Great Awakening started with a small group of people in prayer. And look at what happened there. So we can't do it all on our own. We need divine intervention, folks. And that's what we're calling upon. Nico, hello from Brisbane, Australia. Fantastic to have you here. You know, it's amazing to me how big Australia is. I mean, take a look at that. It is huge, especially compared to the number of people who live on the continent. It's amazing how big it is. You know what I love about Australia is I watch, I love like uh, geology and gold mining. Uh, Australia's got like these giant gold nuggets and people like these big old uh, metal detectors. They're finding rippers. A ripper, it's a ripper. It's amazing to watch these people. They're pulling out like a pound of gold out of the ground with a metal detector. I'm like, you can't find that stuff here in the US. It's so cool to watch. And then they've got opal mining. Oh my goodness. I watch a guy named Black Opal Direct, and it is amazing to see these most beautiful gems that are coming out of the ground. It's just a reminder to me that there's an abundance, that in this creation, in this garden in which we live, there's an abundance, folks. And how are we unlocking abundance? Well, the gold is in your heart. What are they doing in the Philippines with Ophir? The gold of Ophir. They're mining gold in the hearts of men and women. Because that's where it exists. Because all of this value is through agreement in community. What is a country? It's borders and rules and leadership and currency. That's what it is. It's, it's a shared fiction, folks. We live. What are we doing? We're building Hexaco in Texaco. It's amazing. We're going to unlock unbelievable amounts of resources by working together and considering others in addition to ourselves. So, hello from Brisbane, Australia. I love the place. Glad you're here. Davis, what's up? What's up, my friend? The Dish 22. Hello from Germany. Good to see you. We talked about Germany yesterday and all of the folks that are in leadership over there. Man, everybody wants a war. But we don't want a war, do we? Yes, the people, they're like, no, we, we'd like to get along a little better. It'd be nice. People fighting over scarcity. We, we we know where the food is, or one beggar helping another beggar find food. Mobius, hello all. Opabamian, Southern Utah sends its warmest regards. I'm, I'm not sure how warm it is there, but Southern Utah, I'm trying to think, where would Southern Utah be? You know, me and uh, ZZ Tesco went to Beaver, Utah. Yep, yep, not far from the petroglyphs. South Texas Crypto, another day to scoop up some Texan and another day closer to PLS and PLSX release. Yeah, it's hopefully coming soon. With all the things we're seeing from Richard, V3 ought to be out here pretty soon. And then Mainnet. It'll be just in time. Just in time for things to move up and to the right. Sam Kemp, another awesome uh, Texian who is a big-time supporter and volunteer for the Texas Nationalist Movement. It's so great to have you here, Sam. And it's just evidence. It's so cool to see folks that get it. It's a big deal, right? This is a really, really big deal. We're unlocking something together, but we can't do it ourselves. Because if we could do it ourselves, we would have gotten it by now. We wouldn't be here. And we've seen it happen. It's a miracle, folks. A 10,000x in 623 days? Yeah, because people got along. See things the same together. Decree. It's our own decree. Let's make that decree. Create our own value. And let's see people across this planet be freed from debt slavery. It's Freedom Friday, folks. 
consumer slavery, debt slavery. Let's get out of bondage. Let's go. Uh, pleasant travels. Absolutely. John, having a great week. Coinbase finally agreed that I am me, you know, and they are probably the slowest of them all. Can't wait to be able to transfer my ETH to my MetaMask wallet and start staking. Yeah, isn't it crazy? You need a little bit of ETH to do the, the gas fees. Yeah. And it's like, I just want to put in some money into crypto. And boy, do they. They put you through the ringer. Like, take a picture of this and wait 16 weeks and all that. I, I feel you, John. I've been there. I've been there. But it does, you know, once you're over that hump, you're over that hump. But rich liberation. Got to love Freedom Friday. Thanks, man. I appreciate that a lot. I really do. Um, Drix, hey, Crypto Heartbeat, still working on your bars? Yes, man. You know, I almost done with my first song for the community. You know, that's where it's really cool. If you're somebody that writes music and directs you, you obviously are somebody who does that. You know, what I love about music and poetry and art in general is that the craftsmanship and the care comes through. You know when somebody's crafted something, and it could be anything. It could be food, that somebody is a, a great chef. There's something that you take of yourself in creation and put it into the things you create. And so what's really great about, let's say, writing bars is that this clever use of the of language, the craftsmanship comes through and we know it. We're like, oh my goodness, that is amazing. That's incredible. But there is a difference between rhyming and craftsmanship. And yeah, I think it's so cool. Um, maybe we need to collaborate, man. Drix, good to see you, man. Thanks so much. One of these days, I think I'll, I'll shock the world with uh, with my hip hop apotamus, my rhymes the bottomless Swiss verse 2.0. Oh, this is about CFI in horizontally aligned ecosystem, folks. Well, and you think about what has CFI done? Centralized finance, right? These these folks that in the absolute middle, right? Oh, hey, I'm getting a call from Brandon. What's up, Brandon? Yeah, I'm on a stream talking to you. Everybody was hoping to see you. Yes, I did. I put it into Telegram. Okay. You got it. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. Sounds good, man. See ya. All right. I just got word. Isn't that cool? Like breaking news on the pulse. Brandon from Rags to Riches, who is on his way to a meetup and to an educational deal, is going to join us here in a minute. So that's fantastic. And he might even have a special guest who's hanging out with him, but he's going to jump in here in a second. So that's really cool. Yeah. So CFI, centralized finance in the banking system, you know, leverage, all this stuff is what's gotten things in trouble. And people have gotten the wrong idea that crypto is that. Crypto isn't that, folks. Real crypto is decentralized. It was the reason it was created. Censorship resistant, no third party, right? No counterparty risk. It does what it says it's going to do. We can have confidence because it's code. It's not a person who can change the rules at any minute. Let's go, K. Hudson. What's going on? Defrag Fridays. Okay, KD, that is genius. That's what we need to call it. We're going to defragment the hard drive. We're going to reboot the system. We're going to restart this thing and we're going to have it. It's going to be clean and fresh, right? That's what we need to trim it back. Did you know that the reason that you trim a, a, a vine, a grapevine, is to produce better fruit, right? So you might have these things, these like tendril gangly things growing off. If you leave them there, they will grow fruit, but all the rest of your fruit won't be as good. So you have to trim these things off of the ends. It gets too out of control. But you want, you're preserving the fruit of the system by doing that. And so when you build something on a good foundation and you've got this, you know, the right soil and you've got all of these things, you want to keep things trim. It's kind of like your own system, right? If, you, if you're overweight and you smoke and you do all these different things, you end up having challenges to your system. And so it's the same thing is true, right? It's all this infinite resolution with systems of government as well. They get out of control. We build all these programs and we never shut them down. We never trim them because no one wants to do that, right? Everybody wants to be like, what can you give me? And that's the thing. We've basically in this system, really since the New Deal, we're bribing voters. That's what it is. It's just, it's just extended bribery, but we could go into that later. Defrag Friday is what it is. Tribal Silence, what's up, Forrest? I'm ready to break the chains that bind. <laughs> Let's reboot this ugly thing. Isn't that the truth? Man, I'll tell you. And they are bondage, right? 
you know, if you look spiritually at bondage, you see things like what is fasting for, right? What is, you know, you hear about people fasting. We hear about intermediate fasting and all this. Well, what is the purpose of it? And if you look into uh, the scriptures, you'll find that people, it breaks these binds. It binds us together. So you think about this, why would you stop eating and why would you, you know, maybe just do a water fast or something like that? Because your system has gotten used to the current circumstances. And so if you stop eating, you're going to feel it, but you break through and you break out of bondage that's in that routine. And sometimes those routines aren't good for us. And so it's helpful for us to fast and pray, right? We're saying, oh, I'm not just going to live on this food and this, this system. I'm going to, I want to take a break from this and it's going to, it's going to unlock things. And we see people very, in the very natural sense, breaking through things with, with um, changing the routine. So we're going to reboot the system. Mobius started with a 386, dude. I did too, man. Back in the day, the 386. <laughs> So great. Daniel, what's up with the love? South Texas Crypto, my favorite Friday video to watch each week. Hey, thanks, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. And if we get rags in here, we might have some really good entertainment. Um, Kay Hudson, green candles for Texan. I know we've seen that. We knew that, you know, a lot of those red candles were just a couple people and they're out of Texan tokens. They've, they've got no more. And so that's pretty good. But we're also, um, we're on CoinGecko. We're going to be on Coin Market Cap here pretty soon. We'll see how they treat uh, supplies as it relates to market cap. But, you know, there'll be things that that come as time comes. You know, people will say, hey, tell us more about this Texan token thing. And how does this fit into Texas independence? And somebody will call and John will call me or Sam will say, hey, you need to go on this show with this guy. I, I called him. He said he'd be open to it. That's what's going to happen. Or you're going to make content or you're going to tell a friend. That's how this stuff works, right? We're one beggar helping another beggar find food. Extravagant taste. We're all amazing. You are all amazing. Own it and use it. By the way, feel free to check that 401k today if you need a smile. That's really cool. Extravagant taste is always uh, helping us straddle the traditional financial system with the uh, the new financial system of crypto. Danny the Singer. Uh-oh. This means something. The background went out. Oh, there it is. Danny the Singer, I caught you live. Hey, are you going on the Hex Cruise? No, no, not going on the cruise. I can't get my wife to go on a boat. That's that's the issue. She's not, she's not convinced. And I hear that either you love cruises or you hate cruises. And we haven't figured that out yet. So maybe as we get, the kids get a little bit older, maybe we'll, I'll be able to convince her to do that. But no, not going to be there. But um, if you go, I hope you have a great time. It sounds like a super fun time. I, I don't know too many people who aren't as fun or on, are as fun as the Hexagons. Um, I like I like the like button is a nail. All right, hit that like button with a hammer, folks. So hammer it. That's awesome. Let the stone cutter keep pounding the rock. It's not the thousand swing that cracks the rock. It's 999 that came before. You know, that's like chopping wood, right? We're going to hit this thing once a day, and that tree's going to fall. Love from David Lee. Ty Bull made it. Mick Slammon. Great. What up? Mick Slammon, it's good to see you. I, I always like seeing you um, in all different locations. It's fantastic. Uh, how do y'all hope you're all well today? Mr. DJ and Dougie Peach. We got Crypto Chronic and DJ and Dougie Peach. So great to see you. Torin, thanks for being here. Uh, Hex Force One, Crypto Heartbeat, good to see you. Great that you're here. Davis, I heard a dev say V3 in three minutes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And that was one of those supermodel, hex supermodels told you that, I'm sure. Sorry to change the subject, but have you had any further contact with Foster and Kimberly Gamble? You, them both on about a year ago. Yeah, we had them on. You know, they they came and were helping out Mad Energy. And it's funny that you say that, Danny. I thought about that today, getting an update on Mad Energy and their whole Zenic Wave stuff and Golden Cipher and the you know wireless energy i mean the things that they're working on it would be really nice to get an update on that that would be really really cool so thanks for that reminder that's really good um torn love you guys david or davis i love opal mining i go boulder opal uh, from western queensland and yes it's a big country we have a farm in northern territory that's as big as texas isn't that crazy texas is enormous you imagine one farm taking seven hours to drive across Wow. Yeah, it's a whole do different world there, isn't it? But it's so cool. The natural resources and the beauty. Wow. 
Um, when Lambo, you know, Lambo coming soon, if that's your goal, you know what, that's the cool thing about choices. You can make your own choices and, you know, you find yourself in abundance, man, bring on the Lambos. You know, I had a friend tell me once, he goes, you know, what's the difference between you and a billionaire? And of course, at the time I was leading a, co a company and I was making good money. It's 222, by the way. Mm -hmm. And he says, really, there's no difference between you and a billionaire, right? You can fly first class, all right? Or you could get, you could, you know, charter a plane. You know, there's a lot of different things, but there's a point in which money doesn't really get you a whole lot more. Now, you may be in a situation where like, you know, uh, this amount of money would change my life entirely, sure. But you get to a certain point where, and I don't know exactly what that is for each person, but, you know, careful what you wish for kind of thing. You know, if you want to drive a Lambo, you can go and you can rent one, right? But daily driver Lambo, eh, I'm not sure I really want that that upkeep and cost, honestly. Pablo, hello, hello. Texan on pump, there you go. Um, there you go. All right, let's see what we got. I'm waiting on Brandon here. Is he coming in? Please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate that. Finbear, what's going on, Finbear? How's the whiskey business treating you? The 5555, five, five, five. wouldn't that be cool? You get this, like, whiskey, and you can, I think it'd be so cool to have something tied to, like, hex steaks and, like, yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, you think about putting, putting, um, what is it? Uh, spirits in charred oak barrels. It'd be really kind of cool to tie something to the hex staking stuff or the Texan staking stuff. Maybe we have to do that. Right. Texan. Yeah. Texan bourbon. Uh, DJ and Dougie, what's going on? Um, Rhymosaurus, yeah. My rhymes, they're bottomless, my friends. My online ghost is here. Anders, good to see you. Uncle Will. Howdy from San Antonio, Hexus. Great to have you. Uh, cruising is great. So some people love cruises. I'm not a big cruise guy. Not a big cruise guy. Well, I don't know that I'm not. Now, if in fact there's uh, cards that I could play poker on a, a boat, I might like that. That'd be pretty cool. Finn Bear. Um... Let's see. Wow, the token really looks good. I hope I wake up some people looking for good financial with doing good. Yeah. You know, and you think about um, where we are in the market and in the cycle, right? I mean, we're early in crypto because it's what, a trillion dollar market cap? And they say, well, likely it'll be 200 and trillion. Yeah, 200 trillion dollar asset class in the next 10 years. That kind of growth, I mean, just, just, by the fact that you hung out here and you were in it is the key. It's a long-term thing. But, yeah, we're at the bottom, folks. We are at the bottom. Um, yeah, Crypty Girl would be a good one. Double deuce of scotch. There you go, the double deuce. So that's the, the funny story that came out from one of these um, voice chats that we had. Somebody was asking, what's the 22 about? I thought that was the double deuce from Roadhouse. Yes, the Finn Barrel Cask Strength. Tin top, what's going on? Texan bourbon with a scorpion in each bottle. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no worm in this tequila, man. It's a scorpion or a rattlesnake tail. Wouldn't that be great, John? Um, there he is, Rafoon LLC. Most of the cruise lines have a poker room. All right, that is good to know. Uh, the only one, freedom, demand it. Absolutely, the only one. Good to see you, buddy. So glad that you're alive and kicking, man. So good to see you. Um, you have to get into international waters for casinos. Okay, that's good to know. What is that, like two? Is it two or four miles off the coast? Not sure. Let's see if Brandon said anything. Like, hey, where's the stuff? Let me let me send him a note. You coming? I don't want to jump into the, the soliloquy if he's going to come in and just interrupt me. But I know that he's hanging out with some hexagons there, so it'd be kind of cool to see them on the stream. Um, yeah, <laughs> I got to do it now that we all know it, you know, and I think that there's, that's, what's interesting is if I was doing it, Finn Bear, this is what I would do. If you search the Googles about uh, private label spirits. Okay. So there are companies that, that provide private label. And so you create your labels and you create these different things and, you know, they'll work with you. You got to have probably, I would say you probably have to have a hundred grand to, to engage, you know, table stakes for them, but there's probably some places that can do some small batch stuff, but they actually will label stuff. They'll even drop shift it, ship it to retailers, but you can create your own brand without being a distiller. And I think that would be so cool. 
you know, it'd be a collector's item. And, you know, if you had NFTs and then the big thing would be, you know, different editions, right? The Finn Bear edition, signature, the signed bottle, be pretty cool. But then all the different vintages, right? I think it'd be cool. Anders, cruises are like Vegas at sea. Well, I guess depending on what your experience is in Vegas, that could be awesome. Blake V, what's going on? Tour in 12 miles. Hello, everyone. Oh, 12 mile limit. Okay, so you have to be 12 miles off the coast to be in international waters. Okay, that's good to know. Good to know. Royal Caribbean actually partners with me, Life in Vegas. Oh, okay, M Life, M Life. Yeah, so that's like MGM, right? Okay, no, nice. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Nautical. Um, sounds freaking awesome, doesn't it, Finbear? Yeah, that would be so cool. But I do think that, um, you know, I don't know how the sale of alcohol, because that's all obviously regulated here in the States, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms and all that stuff. Um, but it would be cool to have your own, you know, brand. But I think they go through um, dealers and, and all that stuff. But, hey, we got enough community. And I, well, if there's one thing I know about uh, hexagons, they like to drink. They like to drink. Um, Hexonium, I was just watching to Bjorn Talks from Norway. Bjorn, that's a good, that's a Norwegian name, right? He's a very interesting person. Back to nature in his message to the world. Fantastic. You know what? I love to watch those things of people like, I built a dugout shelter and lived in it for, you know, three nights in sub-zero temperatures. It's really cool what people will build and do and create. Love watching that. We're meant to be creative. I don't know if you caught that yet, but that's a big key. You know, are you, do you have a hobby like that? Do you create anything, make anything? You know, I know Finn Bear, for example, is a fine craftsman, a woodworker, and part of his business, right? It does that. But there's something about putting your hands to things and making things. And I haven't made a knife in a long time, Finn Bear, and I owe you one. And I really need to get back to it because it's there's something about creating that kind of feeds your soul. So what about you? Do you have a, a hobby, a creation hobby? Maybe you're not the greatest in the world at it, but do you paint? Do you sculpt? Do you, you know, make things? What are, what are your what are your things that are are uh, your creative outlet? What do you do that is creative? I'd be interested in that. Tin top. What the f? I saw bourbon made in Nevada. I thought it could only be called bourbon if it was in a certain part of Kentucky. Um, has to do with the water source or something. You know what? That's really interesting that you say that. Because if you look at bourbon, um, you know, I think bourbon's trying to do something like Scotch did, right? Saying, hey, it's only this. Um, bourbon is a type of barrel-aged American whiskey made primarily from corn. Okay, so I guess bourbon doesn't have to be from that area. Although the precise source of inspiration is uncertain, contenders include Bourbon County, in Kentucky and Bourbon Street in New Orleans, both of which are named after the dynasty. So there's probably a little bit of debate there, and maybe it is. But, you know, if you're going to be somebody that lives in that county, you're going to want to have exclusivity because you want people to pay more for your brand. Because, folks, everything's a story. I don't know if you've noticed that, right? What's the story about your bourbon? It has been aged for 5,555 days, right? Those are all the stories that go along with this. And Finn Bear made it with his hands he walked uphill both ways in the snow to do it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, put a new bridge and a cello right now. Okay, how crazy is that? That is awesome. A new bridge. Okay, so the nut is up top. The bridge is down at the bottom, right? So that's what uh, you know props up the strings, right? I think so. That's fantastic. So that's something and you enjoy doing that. I love watching these people that like make cellos, right? They like literally carve it out of wood. It's amazing stuff. Um, Tor, Hexagon, what's up, all? Yeah, laugh out loud. All right, we're going to jump into this. And if Rags jumps in, great. So it's Freedom Friday, folks. We, we want to reboot the system. So what's this all about? And so I want to review where we have been, and I want to talk about where we are going. This world, people are in the streets, Right. People are in the streets because they're upset about uh, wars and financing wars. Right. There's people across Europe that are like, no, 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 this is not good. You know, maybe they don't have enough to eat. Maybe they don't have enough fuel. They are seeing their way of life being threatened by foreign wars. Right. Ukraine and Russia. We've got all kinds of things that we could talk about literally between Russia and Ukraine. But we think about sanctions and in basically this 
business of war. We see people that have had their accounts frozen because they helped somebody that was a trucker in Canada. We have people on the environmental side going after nitrogen or CO2, in this case, for global warming or climate change. And so we have so many people that are using you know, these levers, right? They're using this as a fulcrum to try to move people. And we see this in Davos. We see all these people essentially centralizing power. And so I want to make a case to you that the system that we're in, right, is it's very much like The Matrix, the 1999 movie with Keanu Reeves. What was The Matrix? A Matrix was a place that Neo didn't know he was in, but he sensed that something was wrong. Remember that at the beginning of the movie? Neo, right, follow the white rabbit. And we know this blue pill, red pill stuff, right? Well, it's a great analogy because most people understand the concept of the matrix. Well, the system is controlled by basically forces that aren't watching out for you. So let's make an assumption. Let's just, uh, let's just imagine this. Imagine that you live in a world right now, literally where we live right now, that's controlled primarily by the systems that have been put up by let's say forces that don't have your best intentions at heart. And I think that's pretty fair. So let me say that again. We live currently in a system and we live in a world where the systems that have been set up have been set up by people who don't have your best interest in mind. I think we could all say, yeah, that makes about sense. Or maybe the systems have gotten so gangly that they don't serve you anymore. And that's, that's being, I think, pretty generous. But if we think about the systems, what are these systems doing? They are centralizing and hoarding. Okay, so what do the systems do? We're there to get ours. So what is the pharmaceutical system? Well, it's not to cure you. It's to extract value from you, money from you, right? What is the, the healthcare system? What is the pharmaceutical industry? What is um, energy system, but literal extraction, right? What are what is imperial worlds that do colonizing do extraction of value? What have we the systems from the very beginning, right? Go kill the guy, take his goal, right? Take his land, drive people off their land, right? So the systems have been started long, long, long ago, but it's really, you know, people lording over others, right? Whether they it's because who my daddy was or because I've got more money or because I got bigger guns or better, you know, weapons. And so it's power, right? The strong oppressing the weak. Well, those systems have become kind of the nature of, of everything, right? Very few people live in a system where there's consideration for each other. But here's what's fascinating. There are some communities if you look back into the late 1800s when they made it over the mountains into Santa Fe and they saw the Pueblo people and you look at some of the amazing art from the 1830s or 40s and then you see the, the stories of how the native people lived, pretty amazing. If you look at the Amish, the Amish in Pennsylvania, there's some interesting things there, right? There's also some challenging things there. But when you look at these systems that we've set up that have been kind of the product of globalization, they are extractive in nature, right? And so our investments, all of these things are extracting value. And here's the thing, folks. There comes a time in every stream, whether you're in the middle of a concept or not, that there's a moment where you have to pause because great things are about to happen. And so in order to, for great things to happen, you have to have a great introduction. And so let's do that now. is not only the CEO, is the CFO, the CMO, the CTO. Is the supreme I done told you. Is the mayor of Sassy City, the commander of couch cushion maintenance, in the islands is known as King K Maya Maya. Is my ace in the hole, my kid Creole, my Bob Dole. In Puma Punku, is known as Veracocha. Is not internationally known, but is known to rock the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, the gentle ginger giant, genius, Brandon from rags to riches. He's not internationally known, but he's known to rock the microphone. Brandon, what's up, man? 
Dude, what's up, man? How'd you like that? Like, it's great. Dude, that, I mean, it, it, it brings a smile to my cold ginger heart every single time. <laughs> Man, you're not into are you like in a in, in like a um looks like you're in a hotel with one of those uh kitchenettes oh no yeah so we're like uh i don't know dude it's real nice it's like a, a brand new it's an airbnb brand new development nice it's real nice man real nice so so hold on that thing that you lifted off the coffee table you know what that is don't you that's it what uh uh something hedron it's a dodecahedron man yeah, I didn't want to. We're say not the showing that part. thing, man. That, that already went to... Yeah. So, what, tell us where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, we were contacted. I guess Hexray Vision talked to a gentleman who has been running crypto boot camps in the Greater Raleigh, North Carolina area, and um, and the guy is actually a consumer of, of your content, my content, and Hexray's. And he asked us to come down and speak on the on the campus of North Carolina State University, where where this will be held tomorrow morning. So CryptoBootCamp.net. CryptoBootCamp.net. How cool is that? And my understanding is Hexray Vision traveled like thirty seven hours in an RV. Is that right? He sure did. That's uh, well. That that harkens back to his days of trucking. So he's a okay. trucker. Okay. Okay. That makes used to it. Yeah. That makes sense. Wow. I, I'm amazed he can do it. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. Same, same way. So what do you um, think, what do you think about, or tell me what you're going to tell me? And then I want to ask you about the chart. So I've got a special guest here though. What? I was wondering if you did. Who's this guy? Hey, what's good, man? And what oh, is going oh, on? Freddie. Freddie quotes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, brother? Dude, man. Yeah. Good to see you, see you man. man man all right freddie i'm back in what's up dude yeah the cowboy hat. i almost brought my cowboy hat dude are we but gonna do are you are you gonna let me be on, like on my boots. are you gonna let me be on one of the new tracks by the way <laughs> i would freddie, love are you gonna... <laughs> i would love okay. to i'm I would trying love to get the commitment now I'll, I'll be working on my bars here. Matt, we gonna... i'll write some lyrics worthy i don't know if, if, okay. if you're gonna write your own lyrics or whatever but i'll, I'll write some I'll write some worthy lyrics for you. All right. If you can just get something that rhymes. Down that old town road, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you can get something that rhymes with Metamucil, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Good. I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> All right. Pretty cool. It's, dude, this is such a treat. So are you we guys hanging spinning. together? We yeah. Yeah. We're, we're chilling. We're, we got this uh, nice spot here and we're going to go, we're going to go check this place out, man. And, and uh, talk to some people tomorrow and educate some folks. Wow. This is fantastic. Yeah. Well, Freddie, it's great to see you, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, thank you for all that you do. You've been super supportive yeah. and kind. Well, take care of Brandon. Don't get him into too much trouble. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Say some prayers for me. All right. That's awesome. Well, tell Hexray we said hello as well. But, Freddie, that's a treat, man. What a treat. Yeah, he's uh, Hexray is out running errands, so he couldn't make it with us here. Okay. People love it, man. People love seeing you guys. It's awesome. So is Freddie going to be – a featured speaker too tomorrow morning. Yeah, I think Freddie's going to speak as well. So it's going to be it's going to be a good representation of the the RH folks, right? Um, yeah, a lot of people who are knowledgeable about it. A lot of people who have benefited from it, and uh, and will be able to kind of as a, testify to the crowd there what, what crypto is actually all about and how important family and community is. Are there going to be? Um a lot of students from the college or what, what's it going to be? You think? I don't know. There, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, they, they've been putting flyers all over campus. Um, he said they probably expect maybe 150 to 200 people. Wow. So that's pretty neat too. So yeah, it, it should be a good turnout, a, a good mix of folks, I'd say. Wow. Uh, and how long is it going to be? It's going to be pretty much an all day event. I, I believe it starts at 9 AM and then I think it goes to, uh, s some point in the afternoon. That's awesome. That is fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Any live streams or anything? So I, I've got a uh, I've got a speech um, prepared. So I think I'm going to make a, a point to kind of go live on that, and um, right. that'll be tomorrow morning at some point. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. You kind of yep. just set it up there while you're while you're yeah talking. on the podium, and, and I might have it facing the audience or something. But uh, yeah, 
dude. That's awesome. That's so yeah, cool. Man. Well, thanks for coming in and sharing with us. I appreciate it a lot. Absolute amount of mente. Who's in chat oh. here? Who, who, hey, who can I pick let me ask this. What do you what do you yeah. think about this pump? We've had a crazy pump here recently. It looks like all the dumpers are out. What are your thoughts on the, the Texan chart? Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of talked about this and, uh, you know, what was it? One or two people that were responsible for pretty much all of the dumping. And, uh, and, and those folks are out. Now, of course, there's going to be people that come in and they're going to see, OK, this is my opportunity to get my one X or get my two point, whatever. It's, it's the same type of stuff, but ultimately it's, it's very nice to see, um, what three days of green candles now, which is pretty good. And I think from the bottom we, uh, I guess from the 17th day to now, I believe we're up about 52%, which is pretty nice. Yeah. I just put up the, uh, the, the chart there. It looks nice, especially when you see all the buys, right? Like that's the last, you know, it, it looks yeah. like folks are folks, you know, folks that had things. Cause one of the things we did, as many of you know, is we did this airdrop and it was, you know, pulse sack, pulse X sack, you know, hex stakers. And then, um, so there's a lot of kind of people that were included in the airdrop and we knew that there were going to be dumpers, right? Because, yeah. you know, people even said to us they would, but you know, we're still sitting over 23,000 holders and we're over 3000 stakers now. And so that's pretty amazing for what, 20, 21 days, 21 days. Yeah, there's a lot of supply that's sitting out there. And, and, and you know, one of the things that you said, Matt, you, you give away what you want to receive. And everybody said that was stupid um, because people were just going to dump on you endlessly, endlessly. But what we're seeing is, is actually quite the opposite. So that's a testament to you, Matt. And um, and, and I think that we also kind of we, we're attracting uh maybe a more mature um, crowd from the TNM side too that might understand uh, the, the value of, of long-term holding. And, and we have less speculators, I think, in. So uh, right now it's a grind. Just like I said, day one, guys, don't FOMO in. Um, just have a plan and stick to it. Okay. Well, Sodman's here. He's he's now a trans ginger, he said. So yeah, he's, he, ad- he's identifying as a ginger now, I think. He came out as a trans ginger, I think, probably four or five days ago on Twitter. Okay. Um, and But in order to be really uh, inducted, he had to steal one soul. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't think he's come up with anything yet. So. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, Nate Nate Smith is here, dude. What do you say to that? No. What's up? I'll Howdy, y'all. You, you big old Texan. You good. Golly, Miss Molly. He is the long, tall Texan, man. Nate, Nate Smith is the um, executive director of the Texas Nationalist Movement. It's great to see him. Many of you met nate in vegas twice he was the guy with the big black cowboy hat on and about what six five six six i mean he's taller than you are yeah he's he yeah he makes me look like a a, you know junior varsity for sure (laughs) jv yeah uh, love my texan texan family that's fantastic nate thanks so much you know we're gonna have nate likely on next week with an update on the uh texas legislative session Um, perfect he told me recently that the first 30 days are like the the shenanigans time and right. after that first 30 days we end up with you know the real business going but they're working working hard behind the scenes and you know what's crazy is i don't know if you noticed this but i'm seeing daniel miller everywhere on social media i'm seeing him <laughs> shorts i'm seeing him on twitter like crazy and the stuff with facebook meta it's a big deal man yeah i saw some news outlets the the fox news affiliates out there picking him picking him up too and uh actually doing a pretty fair job of covering him as well, which was nice. So yeah, yeah, man, this is what it's all about. Yep. Yep. There you go. Sodman soul saving. That's right. Um, well it is, it is awesome to have you, man. Well, um, I'll look forward to, I'll be watching and, and I've got my notifications turned on. So when you go live, um, make sure if you got a big crowd there, you turn it around and get the big selfie with them. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do want to say one thing, and this is actually, I was going to say it to Finn Bear anyway, but uh, Finn Bear, uh, I know he's going through maybe some some tough stuff uh, yeah. personally, and I just want to reach out to him and, and say, you know, I'm thinking about him and yeah. thinking about his family and stuff, man, and, and uh, you're my thoughts, man. Thoughts yeah. and prayers. Awesome. Awesome. Finn Bear, yep. folks, say a prayer for Finn Bear and his family. It just, I mean, that's the coolest thing about this community. People coming together, caring about each other and lifting each other up. If you've got anything, folks 
and I and I open this up. Rags and I open this up. I know David Lee does as well. If you're struggling with anything and you're having a hard time, we're here for you. You know, whatever it may be. And you know, I've just seen so many of these stories that sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. You know, and so I know Rags has been one of those guys. You can hit him up just about any time. He's like, he's always good for a good word. So. Um, that's what's so cool about this community is caring for one another. Yeah, I don't like Finn Beer that much, but I think yeah. the person yeah, yeah. that we're talking about deserves a little, you know, help here, but not Finn yeah. Beer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even a recent uh, New York Times interview for Daniel. Woo. Man, wow. yeah. when the mainstream media is picking up something on this, you know, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see them. Um, uh, here's me with both feet firmly in my mouth. There you go. Finn Bear, you're awesome, man. Thanks for being here. Prayers from Nico as well. Um, and Freddie, Freddie quotes in the other room, praying for your Finn Bear. Fantastic. Dude, tell Freddie thank you so much. Thank you, Freddie, for being uh be, be coming on and saying hello. And Bell him. as oh, he's right there. Thanks, man. <laughs> no problem, brother. Thank All you. right, buddy. All right, take care. You guys have a, a good time. I wish I was All right, there. All right, bye. Yeah. Bye. Wow. Wow. Dude, it's so great. Isn't it nice having friends? You know, I, I say this a lot. As an adult, you know, you got kids and all that stuff. You know, it's not really often, you know, you, maybe you got kids and, you know, the kids have, you know, class or something. And there's, you know, you, you meet people that are kind of in your community and all that stuff. And I think a lot of people, because of the nature of school and everything, kind of made friends when they were younger, or maybe at college or something. But when you're an adult like making friends and really being in a scenario in which you can be transparent enough to actually develop a friendship is extremely rare, right? So when you think like, oh yeah, this cryptocurrency investment I got into has made me connect with people on a level that I consider them actual friends. And to me, that's really a bold thing. You know, I think that's one of the, the nature uh, fundamentals of the local church, you know, and you think of religious type of connections and you've got civic organizations and you've got you know, things like that. But, you know, it's not like you're walking through the, the grocery store and you're like, hey, you want to be my friend? You know, and people like punch you in the face. But you think about really cryptocurrency, right? This thing that, you know, people are like, yeah, we're winning together. Isn't this fun? This is so exciting. High five. Or, oh, man, it really sucks. It's really down. I got into, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. And then you hear about all kinds of things. Like my dad passes away and David Lee's there, you know? And you don't realize, hold on a second, there's some really good people out there that are sensitive to what's going on with you. And I've seen this, we've, we've seen a number of people in our community really dealing with addiction um, and, you know, dealing with um, financial problems, dealing with relationship problems and all that stuff. And I, I feel like if we can't bear one another's burdens, what's the value of all this? Because what does it do? It actually, it actually, you know, it galvanizes relationships. I used to do uh, consulting um, in the nonprofit space, and you probably know that, but I worked with a number of large churches. And I remember this one pastor, he's from a, a big church in Southern California, and he and I went and got an in and out burger. And we we're sitting there, and he goes, you know what? They had like 90% 90, 90 of their church was in small groups. And that was like an anomaly in the church world that many, that higher percentage would be in small groups, meaning they got together during the week. That's really all it meant. And he said, he said, you know, we do these things called sermon-based small groups where they give them like this curriculum that's based on the sermon for the week. And he goes, and you know, you think about a pastor, you think, oh, you know, he cares about just spiritual development. And I'm like thinking that he's one way. He goes, you know what? You know what all this is? You know why we have so many people in that? It's because I forced them to get into uh, some content for six weeks. And he goes, six weeks is kind of this magic number. If you can get people to meet with six weeks, all hell breaks loose in somebody's life and they come around each other and serve them. I was like, what? I said, so this is like a strategy. He's like, yeah, whether they, they study the, the content or not, what happens is if you get people together for <laughs> enough times, something's going to go wrong in somebody's life and the other's going to come and help. And in the process of serving other people, you build deep relationships. And I was like, you're sneaky, dude. Hold on. That's crazy. And, you know, you think about like a church, it's like, well, we need to learn this or learn that. No, no, no. 
It's about coming together and serving each other. And that's where people get bonded together. And that's what I've seen in this Hex and Pulse community. People, you know, it's like if we're stuck in an elevator, we'd be fast friends, if you know what I'm saying, right? That's why people that are have been in the military and gone on, you know, deployment, they're just like brothers from a different mother. So Finbear, you're, you're a brother from a different mother, right? Oh, man. Facing reality with the prayers. Crypto Chronic as well. Texians are best of the best. Last say Rafen. Um, Finbear. Oh, we got some native language support there. Fantastic. Uh, Suomi. Nice. Um, that is so fantastic. Everybody watching out for each other. Folks, we need to reboot this system. We need to... We need to return it to popular control. And so many things have been taken over by a class of people that believe that they're more important than you, they're richer than you, they're smarter than you. And this has always been this, you know, this struggle that's happened is that there are people who, you know, I've got the control. And I would, I would submit to you that if you had a bunch of money and a bunch of power, you'd want to hang on to it too. It's a pretty natural thing that... Once you got something, you don't want to lose it. The problem is we've built a system over these years that's extractive in nature. It's not It's not additive, right? And it's not based on abundance. It's based on scarcity. And so I think that we're coming into this age of crisis where there's a group of people that I feel like we sense it, just like in the matrix, that we're being called out of a place of bondage. And we're saying, no, there is a better way. And it's not utopia, folks. It's not like, oh, yeah, we can just twist the dials of social engineering and give me the money and I'll do a better job. It's really about giving people the ability to make their own decisions. You know, one of the things that I've recognized is you ever have somebody give you advice that you didn't ask for? Yeah, what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Somebody gives you unsolicited advice and you're like, go shove it up your beep, right? You're like, no, 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 you don't have context. You don't know my situation and I don't respect you. So you can keep your opinion to yourself. But when you have trusted relationships with somebody that understands and knows you and knows the context, you're like, hey, I need some help here. And I value that advice. The same thing is true with governance is that we know what's going on locally. And so I think about this. Is the right thing for downtown Chicago the right thing for Central Texas? Not exactly. Are there some fundamentals that are probably pretty good? Yes, but it's different. And so this idea that people, one, singularly as an individual, have value and can make their own decision, that's, that's personal autonomy and freedom. But the same thing is true in communities, is that the further away you go with governance, like Washington, it's so far away. Well, yeah, they're tone deaf. They don't understand what's going on, and it doesn't, it doesn't resonate as true. Right? It's false. It's a lie. And even if you think you know what's best. So why did we enumerate these things in the Constitution and limit government? Because we said you can't make local decisions from far away. So we're going to limit the number of decisions you make. Keep it simple. Protect us, right? Protect our borders. National defense, right? The basic stuff. The problem is the federal government has convinced themselves that they are one, right? It's the United States of America as a singular thing, as a country. And what they don't realize is it wasn't set up that way. It was a representative representative republic. And that's this idea that these are individual states, right? What is a state department, right? Each of these states is, is governing themselves. That's why they have constitutions, right? But the problem is, is we've added all these things that had to be federal, the heavy hand of government. But as soon as you create something, you never take it away. You know, they don't stop programs. They just keep them and continue them. And they cost more and more and more. And it gets out of control. And then we have all of these bureaucrats, all this legislation. And then it gets so complicated that people can literally change laws that are unelected and are not a part of the legislature. And they can do that through the regulatory state. And this becomes this behemoth, right? This Leviathan that is oppressive. And it takes real leadership and real pain to get to a point where you're saying, no, 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 we're going to wholesale change this. So I want you to understand something. Texas independence is a thing. It represents so much. But what it's doing is saying, we are tired of this existing relationship and we want to go it alone. But in that process, we want to show you how it's done. And well, why can we show how it's done? 
because we know that this current system is basically anything is better than this. And I don't mean it that way, but I do believe that there are people within Texas who understand and value individuals and believe that you can be trusted to make decisions yourself. They believe that people are created equally and they can govern themselves and they can make their own decisions locally. And I'm going to tell you, even though Texas is a big place, it is, it's set up to be its own nation. And it was for nine years from 1836 to whatever nine years is after that, right? 45. And it was, you know, if you think about this, it's been a nation previously, right? We declared independence from Mexico, March 2nd of 1836. And then one independence, April 21st of the same year at the Battle of San Jacinto. And if you look at the Declaration of Independence of Texas, and you look at the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America, you'll see some very common things about that. And what I really like about this is what is America but an idea? America isn't the 50 states. America is an idea, and that idea is a powerful one, and it's one of freedom and liberty and choice. It's about, yeah, it's about you choosing how you want to be governed. And so self-determination is at the very, very core, because what is government but just, hey, this is the best we think it can you know, contribute to our life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. And if there comes a time when these things have to be abolished or changed, that's your choice, people. And so what are we advocating for? Why am I saying we need to reboot the system? Because the system is created by the people. And if you've gotten to the point where, hey, it's not serving the people, hey, you have the right to abolish or change it. And in this scenario, we're doing both. We want to give the people of Texas the right to vote. 66% in a recent poll said that they would vote for Texas independence. So what did we do? We created the Texan token. We came alongside the Texas nationalist movement. We said, hey, we want to support this type of pushing back. This is the first time in the blockchain that a crypto project has come alongside a political outcome. Let's go. We want to get people excited about it. Do I know when it's going to happen? Well, I hope in November of 2023, the people of Texas get a right to vote. I don't know which way they're going to vote. I have a, I have a pretty good guess. Do I think things would be better for my family in Texas if that was the case? Absolutely. But here's the thing. What we've done with this immutable contract with Texan is we've allowed something that could potentially free the captives, that people participate together with their own decree of value, and we unlock tremendous amount of resources, just like it happened in Hex and Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is a whole new financial world, and it's done by decree, right? This whole world, from my perspective, was spoken into existence in the quantum realm. The waveform collapses when you observe it. So we speak things into existence, the very words that you say. So why would you speak up? Because you create. And what are we creating? A future for ourselves that's better. And that's the whole point of this whole shoot and match. It's time to reboot the system. And that's through Texas independence. And we're going to lead in the world and show people that they no longer have to live under the heavy hand of government. They can be trusted to make their own decisions. And all of this authority and all this power is given by the people. You are meant to be free. Folks, thanks for joining The Pulse today. My name is Matt. This is Crypto Heartbeat. And I hope you have a great Friday or Saturday or weekend or whatever it may be. But do not lose hope. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not mess with Texas. Take care, everybody.